research, so we're still going on in, in, in anthropology, social anthropology. And my focus is about social change in rural Cambodia, but with one special focus, which is uh, uh, related to childhood and education. So all my ethnographic focus in the village is about childhood and education. So it means when I say in the village, I, I of course I spend time with people, but they're very close to three uh, family groups. So it's not even a village, no, it's three family groups. And I spend time with them. I conduct interviews about education, what is to be a child, things like that. Uh, and of course, I observe the social family life. Second, I, I conduct field works in the primary school uh, where the kids from the village go. So I spend time in the classroom, in, on, on the playground, we during meetings, we are between teachers. So I spend a lot of time in the primary school. And third, and it will link us to this presentation, I, because my work is about uh, childhood education, but no in anthropology, contemporary anthropology, we all agree to say if I study education and childhood, I have, have of course to take the children's point of view. It's not possible anymore to study childhood from the only adult point of view. So no, but everybody agrees on anthropology. I spend time with children. I, it means I, I talk with them, I follow, uh, follow them when, when they bring the cattle into the rice fields, when they fish, uh, play, uh, when they fish, when they fish, uh, when they play on the playground, uh, at home of course. And uh, the main point here today is I focus a lot on the, about the, their games. What do they play and what do they talk? So we can we can say I want to feel work in children's society of the village. So of course when I say that I try because as an elder it's not easy get uh, the confidence of the children and to spend time with them. So basically this is my, my work in the village and you can see what I, what, when I, what I mean when I say I focus on childhood education. But of course I was talking about social change. It means I'm not completely isolated in the village and I take into consideration uh, the, the market economy. Market economy is going to the right skills, reach the families and of course, um, development policies related to childhood education, so I mean Ministry of Education, UN, UNICEF and UNESCO, and several NGOs specialized in childhood education fields. And they play a big role now in education, and they reach, as market economy, they reach the families and the primary school. So, and I will add migration now from the young people, but we, we leave childhood uh, for a while. There is a, more connection, more connection between uh, rural Cambodia and cities, but especially in Ben, especially Gavin factories, you know, everything about that. So, when I focus on childhood education, it's at local scale, of course, three family groups, but my point is to understand social change. We are at the 21st century in Cambodia, and it has to be taken into account. Uh, yeah, you can turn it off. Uh, I, I have two, and the second one, and I need my paper. Yeah. Yes. But so no, because I'm going to give a little communication about uh, children games. But I would like you to take five minutes to make a more, more, bit more introduction to let you know why. I'm focusing on children games, especially what I call uh, singing and clapping games. But please wait five minutes that I will need my paper to explain you. Because it starts from a political anthropology, but I would like to explain what I mean when I use the word politic. And when I use the word politic, I refer to one concept, I borrow it uh, very modestly from Michel Foucault, which is, which is the concept of Governmentality. So, governmentality, I'd like to write it and to explain it, to try to be clear, I need my paper because it's a hard concept to use. And so, I, I translated it into English to be sure I will be clear. Sorry. 
we have to wait like that. So, waiting for that, any question about the... Yeah. Can you, uh, can you clarify the ages of what child fit in yeah. It depends on... I could say between 4 and 12. Okay. Yeah. But I did, but it was during my PhD, and it's not the point today, but I did a work or so about rebirths, invisible world during the early childhood. So I did focus on childhood at the early age because it implies discussion of health and cosmology, and it implies uh, uh, what I can call the visible, invisible, invisible world and rebirth. I worked a lot about rebirth, so you can say reincarnation, but. Uh, this is another point. Yeah, the main point is kids. We can say uh, we can go to primary school. And just let you know more about methodology because we, it's time to talk about that. I I work on my own, so I don't uh, work with translator. I, let's say I speak Khmer well enough to work on my own, it's been seven years, but I record, I record a lot, and when I, I so transcription of records is maybe 20% of my work, uh, it's, it takes me a long time to, when I spend time at the pen, when I'm in the pen, I work with a friend, a Cambodian friend, so we listen all the records for hours and days and weeks, and when I don't understand, she's supporting me to do transcription, but it's from Khmer to Khmer, it's not translation. I hope I'm clear about my methodological perspective. But isn't everybody familiar with governmentality? Yeah. Say it again, please. Governmentality. Yeah. It's a Michel Foucault's concept. It's a... Um, governmentality, I try to be clear, is... Okay. I use the word power. Could you write it? Yeah, but I need my paper to be sure that. First, but I, because I will explain in that when I talk about politics to, to talk about education. This is my focus. So, first, the word power, it will be the ability to air up, to um, orient, to. Uh, I need my paper. <laughs> Even governmentality in Khmer is the same, <laughs> same problem. Maybe the same problem. But I will write it like that. Governmental, let's say, PT. Children's attitude. So, 
So from that point of view, we can say that education is governmental and political. So I, in my work in the village, governmentality, there is family governmentality. Of course, parents and uh, the environment try to orient uh, the children's attitude. So I work, I do research, I do research about family governmentality. State governmentality, and of course it implies the whole school. And international governmentality related to, to uh, even market economy and, uh, and development policies. So this is a big part of my work in the village. I try to analyze uh, the, the game, the game of the play of governmentality at the Swiss case. But when children are all together, we can say that they walk around, we can say that they wander. They wander, I, use, I translate the word in the Khmer, uh, the Khmer word, Daleng. Daleng, and this word means when they Daleng, when they wander, they share a social time among themselves, which can be seen as in the margin of governmentality. Is it clear when I say that? So that's why I pose a problem I want to, I want to pose here, but it, I pose a problem of the wandering child, child, wandering child. And it's I think relevant to to talk about the margin of government. That's it for, for this introduction. So focusing on sociability among children, I uh, focus more because when people, when children wander, wander, they play games. We can say sociability among children is maybe 80 persons to play. They don't do something, they play for the most part of the time. So I focused about uh, playing games in children uh, society. And um, during my field work in the days, I observed many, many games. So I'm talking about games which, which have names and specific rules. So it's not play uh, in general term. And during my field work, I collected I collected, let's say, 40 games during this field work that a kid between 4 and 12 play together. So 40 games, it means what's the name of the game, what are the rules, who play with who, etc. etc. So I have now in my computer 40 um, pages describing each game. So I have for a corpus of 40 games in the village playing by the kids. To make it uh, more clear, I've divided it in three categories. Okay, I can show you. I don't need to write it. Ah, uh, I don't know how to make it. Three categories catching and escaping games, like hide and seek, for example. Second category peace games, species games, like marble, for example. So all the games of our Lenchu, Lenchu is very famous in Cambodia in Southeast Asia. Uh, each game, every game you use uh, something and you eat. It's a money, actually. It's a money. So catching games, pieces games, and the one I like to talk about now, singing and clapping games. So I'm uh, talking about the games, you know, where the kids play with their hands and sing by them at the same time. So there are two ways that we come back to that. In that way, or when they put all their hands and they do like that. So I was a bit curious, interested in that practice, and I focused on it and I started to understand, okay, it's curious why do the kids spontaneously play these kind of games? But of course, it's not a command specificity. I remember I, just, I saw that when I was a kid in the So, uh, So now my work in progress is uh, I try to come back to these games, all of this, and um, to come back from an international, pragmatic world and linguistic perspective to go deeper into the ethnography of games. So it means to, I want to, I will be short about that, but just to try to zoom on interactions. It's not uh, to 
collect games is to collect practices, but it's interesting to go beyond beyond practices to understand the meaning for, for the kids uh, who play together. So how do they cheat? Uh, cheat? 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 How do they cheat? How do they play the rules? Do they use the rules? Uh, when, when, why do they, there are conflicts? All the strategy they use in, in, um, along the rules. Uh, sorry, I'm not very clear, but it's uh, from an epistemological point of view, it's more pragmatic and interrational. So just to let you know about that, from a synchronic point of view, I assume an interest for the way social order creates itself and co itself in performative playing field at the age of childhood. So the way when I can look at a party, how, what is the social organization that is created in this field, party of play, okay? And from a diachronic point of view, I'm interested in games practices in the children's society, considering the progression of these games while the child grows up. From tenderness games in the maternal blossom, early childhood, until the games played by single men and women during the New Year festival. So, when I say diachronic, it means I also focus how do kids grow up while playing from 3 years old to 16 years old. And furthermore, it's interesting also when I'm talking about social change uh, to understand what are the new games appearing and what games are uh, give, give, given up by the kids. So it's also an entry interesting uh, to, to analyze social change. Okay, so singing and hand clapping games. So these games seem to be very interesting in the extent that they imply language, and more precisely some kind of poetry. Indeed, in these games, children may circle or place or play face to face, and then clap their hands while chanting rhymes. They clap hands and they chant rhymes. Under the houses, at the edge of the pathway or on the school playground, their social life closes in on a specific communicational modality. The one that consists in playing with words and hands. So these games mix a versified speaking and particular choreographies. They assume a poetical dimension and rely of, kind of, of some kind of oral literacy. So, what makes them specific is maybe this literacy point of view. It's different from uh, uh, catching games or uh, pieces games. There is poetry in these games. Poetry which is really bizarre, very strange, because they use, uh, you will see the text after, so it's a bit uh, strange for an adult. But it's real poetry and there is a concern of, of rhyme. But, this is the main point, and while I'm, uh, the CKS was interested, and that's what I, uh, the last question, and the CKS helped me to conduct the survey, the point is, was, okay, so i just show you in Jim Crow first. So, this is the first corpus I built in, uh, in Jim Crow, in this village, in Hong Chang province. So I have several games, this is the beginning of the text. Maybe uh, you know it. Check the guy, I'm with our mic, with my song. Check the dong, I'm with that. Check the crowd, in power. So this all was game to teach people playing Cambodia. So you have, I, I have made this corpus, analyzed. This is an article I published two years ago, and uh, all the text and the way the children play from each game. But the idea was I proposed to CKS because I consider it as a immaterial heritage from childhood, so literacy, I think it's really relevant really to consider it as that. It's popular literacy rooted in childhood. So the idea was to know, okay, how is it in other provinces? Um, can we build a compass at a national scale? Of course, I didn't, not yet. But the point was to, to make comparative work and to go to two other provinces. So I, I talked with colleagues, historian, linguist, 
precisely, and the idea was to choose one province near the Thai border in Bante Minche. So with my friend Dila, we went to Bante Minche province in a village uh, called uh, Sai Che. Sai che. And af after we did uh, the second uh, third one of the jungle, we went to, to the Vietnamese border, Takeo in Takeo province in Angkor Wadai. So the idea was to build three purposes and to compare and to see what are the differences and what are the constants. So, yeah. So the idea was that was to, to in a commerce studies episteme, the idea was okay, what do we have uh, and what can we build? And so we, we went with Dila. So and all the methodological uh, details, but we did our work, and after we uh, analyzed all the data, and I will go straight to the points. It's a bit disappointing because it would have been more interesting to have many differences, many variation, 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 variation. But at the end, it was very uh, uh, a homogeneous corpus. So we found the same games, more or less, in Bantu, in J, and in. So, saying that, I will show you the, these games uh, just after, but it's a pity it would have been more interesting to have completely different games, especially we had in Thai influence and Japanese influence, but we got the same, maybe 80%. Um, so now I show you, where is my... Uh, Here, the village of Hong Cham here, and uh, Angkor Wadai, something like there. So this is the corpus. And of course, yeah, I think like that, it will be interesting to learn times, especially in what we call ethnic minorities. It's not just a crime. Um, so, no, I don't think that. It's a and so I would like to show you, it's of course, uh, it was a lot of Khmer text, so I selected some, to show you some. I tried to translate it in English, so excuse me, please, if it's not very uh, perfect. And these are the texts. So I, we can say four games, singing games, are everywhere. And I will bet that these games are the famous ones in a common area. You can't see every single. Ah. Ah. Is it possible to make it bigger? Why? So I think it's interesting. And why? 
is, there in, is it in every country or sometimes it doesn't appear in some countries? And if it doesn't appear in some countries, why? So it be a first question. It's a big question, but I think it's stimulating to wonder like that. And the second one is why these games become uh, a, fem a female specialty. In Cambodia, it's sure, it becomes an age after age, year after year, the, the, the girls specialty. So why these games become a girls specialty? I think it's a question. It's curious. It's so, thank you. This is the first game, which is Jack of Dawn. So I translated it boring, boring, So, do, uh, is everybody can read Khmer or uh, sorry, the translation? I will. Do you want to take time to look at it? Or because I will summarize after. Because I also. You have the text in Khmer and in English. Because I would like just to show you. Just to let you have an idea what. So remember just there are four texts, four, four games, but with little variations. So first, round net dance number one, when they like a round dance you know, when they put their hand like that. Second one. Uh, I highlighted this and this, so if you can help me translating, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, don't understand this word, this words. So for example, just to let you, um, for example, oh yeah, yeah. This one, for example, is Jack Dog Dong, Milong Mila, Katoi Trai Bran, Ning Hok, Okomba, Procham Thong, Procham Thong, Tombong Lusai, Procham Wek, Ban Tung Pai Chu. I don't say it again. So they just sing like that, and it's eliminating games. So first, one, two, three, match one. And before, it was an introduction game to play hide and seek. Uh, the capture is called the Neck Jardi in Khmer, the Guardian. But now it, uh, it has become a game that after they just finish by uh, uh, shouting, uh, laughing, and uh, hitting each other. So I, I, I'm making a movie now, but it's not uh, done yet, so I cannot show you the movie is filmed now, but it will be uh, maybe six months. Uh, so this is the first text. So you can see it's really similar. Second one, which is very famous in Cambodia, through its spots on life. They back by John Sin on Do, John Sin on Cha, Me on the Hotas of Bion, Rock Mo Wang Passing Song. So some of you know this. Do you know it? No, I don't. Never. Never. We played the first one, but not, not the second one. But some night you don't know it. No, we, we know it, but I think it's a different version. We don't have the Vietnamese things there. Which, <laughs> which one? <laughs> oh, there's a few ones. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe you know the second one, but some night they might buy. Ning Moon that day, on a cake at Chita Morai. Ning Moon that day, Chit Kai Kong Pham. Yeah, yeah. You know this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that version. I let you time to read because it's very hard to take some. I will summarize after, but uh, the text is very. Rhymes is important, so sometimes it's, it's there is priming, rhymes priming to the meaning. So uh, rhymes is more important than semantic. Uh, so it's very hard sometimes to catch, to understand the, the meaning. And I asked the kids, of course, after recording that, transcri transcripting that came back to, to see them, so who is uh, 
who is feeding the beans, why uh, is uh, the plow is broken, etc. etc. And I got a few information but they don't need it. It's just fun saying the text. Rhythm and phonia are the most important things. I let you uh, I do, it's okay to go to the third one. This one is a bit less famous, but uh, all people know it's this one. So it was really the game to introduce hide and seek and to, to choose the capture or the net capture during the song. I'm sorry. I cannot have a post man in English. Yet, 
except the, the fact it's more feminine and uh, these things go bad. So what I can say just to conclude is um, I think what's important, especially chapter down these games and what's on die these games are played in the maternal bosom. So these games, it's an hypothesis, are maternal games. They are played by mother, grandmother, and after the kids um, reproduce it in their own way, we create it to play. So there is something, some like of continuity between uh, playing in the maternal bosom and playing maybe five years later among children. These games, or you can find these games in the two uh, social sphere, social areas. So there is something interesting uh, linked to a consolation room. So I think it could be interesting to go further in that way. So just to finish, to go further in that research, it's important, it's my best big challenge for me is to understand the meaning of these games from children's point of view. Why do you, as a six years old boy, as an eight years old girl, do you like to play these games? It's, I'm not satisfied by the answers and I'd like to go further in the anthropology to get to the meaning of my position. So, from the unique perspective. So, what is the meaning? Why do you play? Not how do you play? It's why do you play? How do you play? I'm done. I've done, done all my work in Junko. I know how they play, but I would like to know why. This is the first question I'd like to go further. Second, how do you play? I would like to go further, but how do we use the rules? You know, if you talk about anthropology, you have anthropology of rules. It's an epistemological perspective, but you have also uh, an anthropology which is interested in how do you go in the margin of rules. And third, what do the kids learn when they play these games? What do they learn to do in a social relationship perspective? What do they learn to think? So, and the fourth and last question, and I finish with that, 